Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, This is Gabby from HoneyBook Concierge, and um, welcome to Managing Payments in HoneyBook. So I just kind of want to go over our agenda for today. We are, um, whatever, we did our general housekeeping, Um, (laughs) but um, we're also going to talk about lead up to payments. So what I mean by that is just, you know, things such as like setting your payment options in HoneyBook, creating payment schedules, stuff like that. And then we're also going to talk about the client's experience. So I'm going to show you guys, you know, what this looks like from the client side and how, um, you know, how they are going to submit payments to you through HoneyBook. And then we'll talk about managing payments or sorry, managing changes to payments. So things such as like updating the payment schedule or um, issuing a refund, things like that. And then we'll talk about receiving payments. So, um, you know, what I mean by that is going to be like notifications, deposit times, transaction fees, um, and also just tracking all your payments. And then um, I'm hoping that we have a little bit of time at the very end to answer some questions as well. So that's kind of everything for today. We're going to talk about a lot of great stuff. Um, and then if, if you do have any questions throughout this, go ahead and just type in um, whatever questions you have into the chat box and um, I'll get to those at the very end. So we're just going to kind of go ahead and dive right in. So first of all, I want to just explain, you know, how you would go about creating a project invoice. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. We're going to title this. Gabby's project. Well, we'll make it a birthday. Gabby's birthday. Add my clients. Great. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm applying an invoice to this project. I'm getting ready to send an invoice out to my client. So I'm going to go here send an invoice and I'm going to go ahead and select one of my templates. I'm going to use my core services template. So I'm applying this template to my project. And what I want to point out here for you guys is um, how to really like set up all of the settings for your invoice before you send it out. So this is an invoice template. I'm not changing any of the content here, but what I really want to um, just mention is all of the stuff in this Um, file drawer tab right here. So this is where you're going to find all the settings for this invoice file. Um, This first setting is going to be gratuity. So if you want your client to be able to tip you, um, this, you're going to want this toggled on. The um, default setting is to have this toggled on, um, but you can also toggle it off if you want. Um, And then this right here, this is where you're actually going to go to edit your client's payment options. So if for any reason you prefer one payment option over the other, um, this is where you would go to edit those options. Um, you can do bank transfer only, credit card only, or you could do credit card and bank transfer. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with both options, but this is where you would go to edit that. And something to note is that um, this is not, there's no way to set a universal setting for this. Um, so if like, for example, you only want to ever accept bank transfer payments, um, at the moment there isn't a way to do that universally. So you will have to edit it on a per file basis. So make sure you're doing that every single time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then also this is where you can actually set up auto pay. So this is really useful if you, you know, this kind of just helps ensure that you're getting paid on time. Um, So if you would like for your client to use auto pay, this is where you would toggle that on. Um, They will still have to agree to it and opt into it, and they can actually disable it later down the road if they want. Um, But if you want to kind of initially set it up, this is how you would do that. Something to note is that if you don't have this toggled on, your client still has the option to enable this on their end as well. So just something to note. Um, and then lastly, there is a little file expiration. If for any reason like you want this file to expire after a certain send date, um, this is where you would go to do that. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that at this moment in time, but um, that is an option if you have a need for that at all. Okay, so that's kind of my file settings. 
I like my invoice. I'm not going to edit anything on here, but I want to just quickly discuss the payment schedule here. Um, so this is also something that we covered in HB 101, but there are a few options when it comes to your payment schedule. You can do a scheduled invoice, which is um, you know pretty standard. This is what I have set up right now. Um, however, there's also the option to do a recurring um, invoice and what that allows you to do is um you know your that allows you to set up a monthly recurring payment that charges your client on the same date every single month so there's that but in this case i'm going to go ahead and just stick with a scheduled payment um, i'm going to say this first payment is due on the invoice date and then i'll do this one a fixed date i'll select okay great so there's that. Um, so it's it's super simple, as you can tell, to you know set up all those settings the way that you want. Just make sure you're double checking everything in this file drawer tab whenever you send a file, um, just to make sure everything is um, set up the way you want. And then once everything's all good to go, you can just go ahead and send this invoice out to your client. And I'm actually gonna show you what this looks like for your client. So we'll do next review email edit the um, email however you like, and then you're just gonna go ahead and send that to your client. I wanna go ahead and show you what this looks like from the client side. So give me one moment, I'm gonna switch my screen really quickly. Great, okay, so now we are in, this is the client side. I'm the client and I'm in my email inbox, and you'll see here that I got an invoice from myself, Alex. Um, so this is what your client's gonna see. Again, like this is gonna look different depending on how you have your email set up and whatnot but there's gonna be the email and then there's going to be a little, a link. This is a direct link to the invoice. So to make a payment, your client's just gonna click on this and it's gonna drop them immediately into the invoice file. So there's no need for them to like log in or anything. Um, the file link is just a direct link to the workspace. And this is what your client's gonna see. So it's gonna allow them to, you know, review the package, you know, look at everything that you've set up. They can even look at the payment schedule, things like that. So yeah, this first payment, they can just look at all of the information. And then once they're ready, they're going to click this continue to pay button. And this is going to take them to the payment page. So this is what it's going to look like for your client. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that if you remember in my file settings, I had credit card and bank transfer as the payment options. So right now it's on a credit card payment option, but they'll just click this little pay with bank transfer if they want to do that instead. And you can see they can just like easily toggle between the two payment options here. So for credit card, they would just obviously enter in all of their credit card information. And then with bank transfer, they would click this to um, add their bank account. I'm gonna go back to credit card. Um, obviously, I am not a real client, so I can't actually show you the full process, but um, you'll also see that I set up auto pay in my file settings. So once my client enters in all their information, they're going to be, they're gonna to need to check this box. It says, I agree that future payments will be charged automatically. Um, they'll be required to check that in order to submit the payment. Now, if you didn't set up auto pay, they're still gonna see something very similar to this where they can choose to opt into auto pay but they're not going to be required to check it off in order to submit a payment so that's kind of the difference between the setting being toggled on or not but yeah so that's all there it's really simple um you can tell it's like a really self-explanatory easy layout they'll go ahead and pay and then once they actually submit their payment they're going to get a payment confirmation now that's going to look different depending on the payment method that they used so i want to just quickly show you guys what that's going to look like so here, whoops, um, if they submitted a credit card payment, first of all, they're always going to get an email confirmation. So they will have um, a confirmation automatically sent to their email. But then when they actually click submit payment, they're going to be taken to a screen that has a confirmation. And it's going to look different depending, again, on the payment method. Now, if they paid with credit card, it's going to look like this. It's going to say success. Um, the payment, you know, if it went through successfully, it automatically charged them. They're going to be able to print the receipt. Now, if it's a bank transfer payment, bank transfers are processed differently. We obviously have to retrieve those funds from your client's bank first. So it's not an automatic payment um, in the same way that a credit card is. So instead, they'll get a confirmation that says, we're processing your payment. 
This is the amount, the charge date, the invoice number. And then it also says, we'll notify you as soon as your payment goes through. So what that means is once we actually retrieve those funds from the payment, then we're going to also send them a notification of that. So that's what it's going to look like from the client side. Um, as you can see, it's really a seamless experience for them. They are able to just quickly navigate into the invoice. It takes them directly into the workspace and they could just submit the payment. So it's a pretty um, you know, easy, user-friendly process for them. So now I wanna go back into the vendor account just to show you guys a few more things. So now we are back in my account as the vendor. So now that I've showed you guys the client side view of things, I wanna show you how to, um, you know, if for some reason you need to edit an invoice after it's been sent, um, you need to edit the payment schedule, the invoice amount, whatever it may be, you do have the option to actually edit a sent file. So I'm in the invoice. This is the same invoice that I sent. Um, and for some, like my client wants to change their payment date. So if you need to edit anything, what you'll do is you're going to navigate into the file and you're going to see this little edit button in the top right hand corner. So you'll click that. And this is going to create a draft file of the invoice. So right now I'm working in a draft. My client can't see this yet. I haven't sent it out yet. Like this is only viewable to myself. And you'll see here that I'm in version two draft. And you also have like a little notice here that this is just the draft file I'm working in. And you're going to see that all of this is customizable. So it's going to be like any template or file that you normally see. I can edit any element of it that I want. Now in this situation of maybe like I just needed to update the pricing, maybe we agreed on different pricing, you know, you can edit that. Maybe my client said, you know, I don't want this extra staff. You can delete items, you can, you know, whatever it may be, you can add some tax, maybe you forgot to tax some certain items. You really get the point, you can edit it however you need. Um, same with the payment schedule. Maybe they were like, okay, I don't want to submit today, can you push it back a week? I'll be like, okay, you can go in here, change it, update it, and you're good to go. And then you'll also still have access to all your file settings as well. So maybe there was something on here you needed to change. Um, you can do that as well. Okay, so once everything is the way you want it to go, all you're gonna do is click this little resend invoice button. And that allows you to resend the draft version of this, or not draft version, it allows you to resend the updated file. So you'll go ahead and just resend it. And it's really that simple. Um, your client will have to accept changes on their end to this file. So um, they will be notified that changes were made um, and they'll be prompted to accept those, pay, um, those changes. Now, if auto pay is set up on the file, um, your client will have to accept changes before auto pay can continue to automatically charge them. So it's kind of stalls it until they confirm that like they agree to the changes that you've made. So now that I've showed you, you know, how to edit a file, I also want to show you how you can mark a payment as paid. If you ever receive payment for an invoice payment outside of HoneyBook, but you want to still be able to track that in the system, you can do that by marking the payment as paid. So to do that, again, you're going to navigate back into the file and you're going to go down to the payment schedule and you're going to see this little three dot icon next to the payment. And when you click that, you're going to see this option to mark it as paid. Now, I'm not going to actually do that in this situation, but when you do click this, you're going to be able to like you know enter the payment method so if it was cash check maybe they paid you like via venmo you can type that in um, and you can you know enter in the date that they actually paid you and then you'll do mark as paid and then once you do that the status of this is going to be changed to paid and your client will be able to see that and it's also going to be tracked in your bookkeeping as paid so that's a really useful function and then when it comes to refunding, I actually want to take you into a project that has a real payment so I can show you how refunding works. So just give me one second. Okay, so we're in here and I'm going to go to this invoice I have. Okay, great. So if you want to refund a payment, 
Um, you can navigate into the invoice. You can also just do it um, in the payments tab. You don't need to like actually go into it. But if you ever need to issue a refund, you're going to click the same three dot icon on the payment. So you'll click this and you're going to see in this little option to um, issue a full or partial refund. And then once you do that, um, you can edit, you know, you can do a full refund or maybe if you just want it to be partial, you can type in whatever you want to refund. The important thing to note here is that I'm issuing a refund on a payment that I've already received. So in order to issue, to refund my pay, um, my client, I need to enter in my credit card information. Now this is really important. You're not entering your client's credit card information, you're entering in yours. And the reason is that the way the pro, um, refund works is HoneyBook charges you for the refund. And then once we get those payments, um, sorry, those funds from you, then we transfer the funds to your client. And something to note as well is that there are no transaction fees associated with refunds. So we are only charging you the amount that was deposited into your bank account. So that would be the amount, not um, the amount minus the transaction fee. And then your client is getting the full refund back. So there's no um, there's no fees associated with refunds, which is um, really nice. So that's how you go about issuing a refund. And now I want to just talk about, you know, things such as like actually receiving your payments. So the first part of that would be notifications. So how are you going to be notified when you actually get receive a payment? Um, and there's going to be a few ways. So first of all, there's desktop notifications. So you're going to see in this little notification center, you'll get a notification here that a payment was submitted. So you'll see it here. If you have the mobile app downloaded, you can also set up push notifications on your app so that it automatically notifies you. You'll actually get a little cha-ching sound in the app, which is kind of fun. And then you also get an email confirmation. So you're going to be notified like everywhere. Um, so you'll definitely you know, be aware of when a payment is submitted. When it comes to actually like just tracking and you know seeing all that information, you know, you can obviously see in the payments tab what payments are upcoming, which ones have been paid. Like you can kind of just see um, the specifics for this project. But if you want to like track all of your payments in HoneyBook, um, you would do that by going to your bookkeeping. And this allows you to look at all of your outstanding payments. So this is for every single project you have. You can easily look at all the payments you have upcoming, which ones are overdue. I have a lot of overdue payments. You can click into it and like really quickly send a reminder to your client, um, which just makes it easy. You can do it all from this page instead of having to navigate into each project. And then you can also, you know, look at the ones that have actually been paid. So you'll see the amount that was paid. You'll see the date that it was paid. You'll see like little um, even refunded payments. And then um, for ones that were submitted through HoneyBook, you're also going to see an estimated deposit date. So that. If you're curious, you know, like when is this actually going to be tracked, like, I'm um, sorry, deposited into my bank account, you're going to see a estimated deposit date underneath the payment. So yeah, this is a great place to go to um, just really quickly check in on all your payments and see what's going on. Especially like the outstanding payments, I think is so useful because you can just, you know, really stay on top of what payments are overdue and just quickly send a, a payment reminder if you need to. Also, in regards to payment reminders, this is covered in HB 101 a little bit, but you can set up automatic payment reminder settings in HoneyBook, which I highly recommend you do if you haven't yet. And you can do that in your company preferences at the very bottom. This is where you're going to set up automatic payment reminders. So, you know, this is such a big time save instead of having to remember to remind your clients yourself. Um, you can just set up these automatic emails and you can fully customize the email that your client receives as well. And then just in regards to like processing fees and payment processing times, credit card payments have a 3% transaction fee and those take about two to three business days to land in your bank account. So there's a little bit of a higher processing fee, but you also are receiving your funds sooner. Now, bank transfers have a lower processing fee of 1.5%. Um, however, those take about seven to eight business days to land in your bank account. So um, there's a longer processing time with bank transfers since there's obviously, you know, the needing to take the payments from your client's bank account first and then having to transfer those to your bank account. 
so that kind of plays into, you know, when you set up your payment options for clients, it maybe it's just personal preference. Maybe you prefer the faster processing time of credit cards, or maybe you prefer like the lower processing of bank transfers. Um, it's really up to you. And then um, there was actually one more thing I wanted to mention in the bookkeeping tab. So right now we're in the payments tab. I already showed you this, um, but there are a few other tabs in here that are really important. There's the expenses tab. So this is um, an area in your account where you can manually log expenses. So this allows you to just create a new expense um, and link it to a project that you have in HoneyBook. Um, this is also going to be you know, your profit and loss area. And then lastly, there's the QuickBooks. Quick, QuickBooks tab. Um, if you use QuickBooks, um, we do integrate, which is really amazing. It, this integration allows you to automatically push all your HoneyBook payments to your QuickBooks. So that's where you go to get that all set up. And that's kind of everything. I ran through that really quickly. So we have about like five minutes or so to answer any questions. I may have talked a little quickly, but I wanted to just make sure we went over everything. So um, does anyone have any questions, guys? Any at all? While well, I wait for you guys to maybe think of any questions that you have, I do want to also point out um, one thing, which is I point this out in every webinar, but it's this little question mark icon in the bottom right hand corner. Um, now, if you ever have any questions at all, this is the place to go. Um, you're going to be able to access our product webinars. So we have you know, similar to the one that we're in now, we have a lot of different webinars that cover a lot of the more advanced features in HoneyBook. Um, we have a help center, this help center, we have an amazing help center. Um, pretty much every feature, every tool in HoneyBook is covered here. And there's like really detailed instructions and screenshots. So I always recommend going there first if you have a question. But then we also have a live HoneyBook concierge team. So you can chat with a live person. Um, and this is really great if you maybe need more just like personalized help, any technical support. Um, this is the place to go. All righty. Okay. It doesn't look like we have a lot of questions. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and um, close this out a little bit early. So um, have a great rest of your day, guys. And thank you again for joining me. Bye.